Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial in EVE Online. Today I want to show you how you can make up to 1 billion ISK per hour doing T5 or T6 firestorms with 3 frigates. The setup that we are going to use today is the Nurgle, Retribution and Deacon. First I am going to show you the fits. This is the Nurgle and this is also the main tank of this setup. It has a disintegrator, remote armor repair, afterburner, two batteries, in the low slots has a reactive hardener and free entropic radiation sink. But this reactive together with these two rigs is actually enough tank for this. The rigs have a kinetic and thermal rig. The kinetic is mainly to tank possible wrecking shots from the overmind, as well as the tank rooms with high kinetic damage like drones and Eden Con. Implants, this you can also swap for power grid management or capacitor system operation if you want. Then have capacitor management and gunnery for more DPS. And drones, I use augmented hornets because they have more tank on their shields and you can keep them out longer. They can easily tank one medium suppressor. Then next we're gonna show the retribution. This is considered the main DPS ship. It has beam lasers, a remote rep 2, afterburn and battery. In the lows it has three heat sinks, a multi-spectrum code and a thermal hardener, as well as a thermal rig and a rate of fire rig. Implants, we have capacitor management, gunnery and small energy turret. With gleam, implants and a pyro 2 booster, this gets up to 480 dps. And here we have the Deacon. This is the remote repair ship. It has remote armor repairs, afterburner battery. The lows are mostly tank and we have cap rigs so that it can run all three remote traps cap stable and still has some spare cap in case it gets neutered. Then here we have the implants, hull upgrade, capacitor management, capacitor system operation and you always want to take improved mine float so that you get more cap. You can also add a remote armor repair system implant that lowers the cap needed for the remote wraps, but it is not really needed in T5. In tier 6 it can be helpful in some heavy newting rooms, like if you get like 10 starving Damovics or something. Here is a chart with all the different rooms. The green ones are the easy room and there's not much that can go wrong there. In the yellow ones you have to pay a bit more attention and the red one, in this case the Marshall and Vedmax, are the most difficult rooms. And there you have to pay a lot of attention to what the rats do, what your ships do and so on. First. We've start with the Dracovac room. This is very easy. You just kill all the Kikimoras first and then you go for the Dracovacs. The Dracovacs have a very poor tracking so you don't have to worry too much about the DPS. Just burn for the cash, loot it and then kill the Kikimoras and the Dracovacs. If there are more than six Kikimoras, then you want to activate all three remote traps of, of the Tikun on the Nurgle. And then you also have to kill all starving Demovacs first to remove all the newts.
Next we got the room with Rodivas and Kikimoras. Again, if you get more than 6 Kikimoras, put all the reps of the Deacon on the Nurgle and then kill all the starving Damavigs. Like in this example there were like 5 or 6 of those. I ended up burning to the edge that I can kill some of them before the Kikimoras start shooting. And after that I went for the Kikimoras and the Rodivas. This is more or less straightforward, as the Kikimoras do not switch target except for one of the entire room. the sleeper cruiser room you can most of the time just hit approach on the cache, burn to it and kill the cruisers one after the other. This is also a very easy room. Kill the sentinels and null charge cruisers first and then kill all the rest. If there are upholders and entangle cruisers Watch out of your drones because they like to shoot your drones.
here we have a full Kiki Mora room and this room shows how much your Nurgle can tank even though it has only a reactive Hardner and two Rixus tank. This is actually a tier 6 Kikimora room. So you just put all the reps of your Nurgle plus the rewrap on the retribution on your Nurgle and then you just burn in. But first you have to kill all the starving Damavix first. And then you just kill all the Kikimoras. And this is actually a tier 6 Kikimora room with 13 of those. The Villa Red Mac room is very easy. There you kill the Damavix first because a lot of the DPS comes from those Villa Swarmers drones. The Villa Swarmers themselves do not have to be destroyed to proceed to the next room. So kill all the Damavix and then the Red Max. Those Red Max are much less dangerous compared to the regular. Red maxers they do only about half of their DPS and ramp their DPS much lower. Here we have the drone battle cruiser room and just like in the Kikimora room we make use of the fact that those do not change targets except one. So we draw aggro on the Nurgle, move away and then we send the retribution in to kill those. With the Nurgle you can still shoot with Mason or Mystic at the 20k range. Once you have broken it down to one damage type, you can reset your reactive and brawl then. This works very well if these remainings are either amber or blast, as your Nurgle has very high resistance against their DPS.
The Deep Watcher room is probably the easiest. It just eats up time. Just go in, orbit the 5k and shoot them. I usually just ramp my Nurgle on one of those and send the Retribution together with all the drones on another one. So your Nurgle can spool up to higher DBS and when the Deep Watcher reaches halt, then overheat the gun. The drone room is very easy. If there's a suppressor, just go there and wait. Otherwise, just kill them one after the other. I tend to go for the DPS drones with my Retribution and go for the Evor drones with the Nurgle. If there are multiple different DPS types, then kill the Sparks and Strikes first because your Nurgle has the lowest resistance against them. And just like the drone battle cruisers and Kikimura, these drone freaks do not switch targets except one. However, the Iwa ones like Fogcasters and so on, they do switch targets. In the Angel Room, just hit the approach on the cache with the Nurgle, regroup and kill the Lucifer Cinnabals, then the Elite ones and then all the rest. This is actually the room that kills Hawks in Darks, but in this setup this is quite an easy one. Here we have Karen. There are two variants of this room. One with sleeper cruisers and the other with the drifter cruisers. Kill all the nudes first and then the webs. In the version with the sleeper cruisers you also want to kill the illuminators to remove target painters. Keep transversal up and do not go into a blue cloud as this increases the risk of a wrecking shot.
This is the Vatmer crew. This is the hardest room. Draw aggro on the Nurgle and then activate one remote rep on each the Nurgle and the Retribution. Only use the third rep when you need it, because otherwise there's a good chance that the Vatmax will shoot your Deacon. The kill order are Starving Damavix, then Ghosting Damavix if there are a lot, because otherwise you can't use your disintegrator on the Vatmax because you have too, less, too low range. And then kill the Starving Vatmax and then the Harrowing Vatmax. Here again also pay attention to the behavior of the rats. Sometimes the Harrowing Vatmax follow a striking Damavix and then they come in close. In that case the room is a lot easier because the Vatmax can impossibly hit your frigate. What they also do a lot is to stop all the ships in one place, because the orbit of the Vatmax themselves give enough transversal that they miss at, like, at least 60 to 70 percent of their shots. Also avoid blue clouds and tracking towers because then the Vatmax will hit hard. Here we have the Marshall room. This is a very dangerous room. You have to make sure that your speed is at max all the time. Avoid getting wept at all cost and avoid blue clouds. Because the battleships will hit hard if you go into a blue cloud or get wept too heavy. Marshals have a range of about 65 kilometers, so if you get a lot of marshals together with a lot of fricks, it is a good idea to just move away from them, kill all the small stuff and then go in for the marshals. Also keep in mind that the Edencom ships can hit hard and they do EM and kinetic damage while the marshals do thermal and explosive. So if you get hit by the marshals first, your reactive partner will switch to those damage types and then the Edencom ships can hit very hard. This room is very straightforward. Just hit the approach on the cache, kill all the nudes and then the rest. In this room I tend to go for the Ephialtes cruiser with the Retribution and go for the Fricks with the Nurgle. Watch out for your drones as the frigates like to shoot them.
Here we got the Sancha room. This is one of the harder rooms. What I do is pull some range, kill some annoying frigates with the retribution first and then spiral in on the knights as they have very bad tracking. The frigates that you want to kill early are the lookouts, heralds and smiths as well as the fishers that you do not get trapped. Again, avoid blue clouds as if you go in there the knights can hit very hard. Here we have the Overmind, kill some annoying support frigates first, especially the Snarecasters and Spotlighters and then the Fogcasters, as these reduce the risk of getting a wrecking shot. And just like with the other battleships room, avoid blue clouds. Sometimes the Overmind follows a frigate and then it comes close. If it does not follow a frigate, then push it into the edge of the room. It is not really possible to get the stable orbit because the Overmind webs and then it is faster than the webbed ship. This is why I keep ramping Mystic on the Nurgle because you can't really get closer in. Next is the Leszek room and here you have to also know the behavior of the rats. The striking and renewing Leszek, they will stick together and move away in a ball. The tangling Leszek stay orbit at 12k, but the starving and the blindings, they will orbit each on their own. The Starvings orbit at 35 to 40k and the Blinding at 65k. So you have to pay attention how you move to the Leszek that they don't starburst away. It is good idea to approach them so that they move away all in about the same direction. Sometimes the renewings and the striking follow a drone frigate. So make sure that you do not kill the drone frigates before you have taken out their slackshacks. So I hope after this tutorial that you can now do T5 and T6 firestorms with this setup. If you are new to multiboxing, also watch my other video about it and start in lower tiers like T1, T2 and then move all your way up. In the description you find links to my Twitch and Discord and TikTok. 
so check these out and you also find links to forum posts about returning the old arena. So like and comment in those if you want to see a second gate in the last room. Thanks for watching and goodbye.